From Kuma Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. In an effort to provide a network and platform through which new solutions can be developed to mitigate and solve the country's challenges, the United Nations Development Programme has launched its 60th Accelerator Lab in South Africa. Journalist Simone Litka attended the launch event last month. According to UN Resident Coordinator Nardos Bekele Thomas, the UNDP's flagship program seeks to implement a new way of working together in development and is also the UNDP's way of redoubling its efforts to ensure an accelerated pace to achieving the Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, by 2030. In his keynote address at the launch, Higher Education, Science and Innovation Minister Dr. Bladen Zimande cited the lab's launch as a timely intervention in South Africa's innovation journey. The UNDP accelerator is a timely intervention, I want to say that, in South Africa's innovation journey. And I'm confident that it will play a crucial role in advancing many of the policy intents or objectives of our 2019 white paper on science, technology and innovation. I'm also confident that the accelerator will play an important role in fast-tracking the implementation of the social and economic development priorities of South Africa as clearly defined in our National Development Plan and of course the UN's Sustainable Development Goals. Our most urgent task for our national system of innovation over the next decade is to direct our collective efforts and strengths to address the triple challenges of poverty, inequality and unemployment. In partnership with a wide variety of stakeholders, we are working towards the finalization of the first decadal plan on science technology and innovation by June 2020, which coincides with the outer goals and targets of our National Development Plan in 2030. Consistent with global approaches, a key feature of the Decadal Plan will be the introduction of a set of innovation missions designed to facilitate the much-needed coordination that consistently emerges in reviews and assessments as a key weakness of the national system of innovation. The success of the accelerator would be enhanced by aligning closely with these missions from our decadal plans, just as we hope that the missions themselves will provide the context within which to assist us. I fully concur with Dr. Otto Schola when he noted during our introductory meeting last week that youth development is the key means through which we can decisively shift the needle on all three challenges of poverty, inequality and unemployment at the same time. In fact, I agree. By addressing youth needs, you are already more than halfway in addressing the triple challenges because it is young people who are facing many of these challenges. I would add that it is the large-scale adoption of various forms of innovation for youth development that will be the real game-changer. This requires better ways of identifying and using a range of emerging and cutting-edge technologies, encouraging innovation across society especially community-based and grassroots innovation, focusing on new business models and partnerships and finding better ways where proven innovation approaches can be rapidly scaled. The minister also expressed his support of the Accelerator Lab and said that through the use thereof, it will assist his department in finding effective ways of assisting South Africa in building a post-school education and training foundation. I look forward to the Accelerator unleashing innovation in its various forms. In particular, I look forward to the Accelerator finding effective ways of assisting us in building a post-school education and training foundation that our Department of Higher Education and Training is currently putting in place. 
Our 2013 white paper on post-school education and training is fully aligned to the focus of sustainable development goal number four. That is to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. Our concept, by the way, of post-school education and training is simply based on the fact that as a country we seek to address education and skills acquisition for all South Africans who are out of school and who are likely to go back to school, including those who have never been to school. Delegates also got an opportunity to see South Africa's first humanoid robot named Pepper in action at the launch event as she quickly moderated a Q&A session. The robot is a prime example of what innovation and technology can achieve. Other news making headlines. Montasha eases constraints on mining companies' ability to generate own electricity. Mineral Resources and Energy Minister Gwede Matashe has assured mining companies in South Africa they will be able to generate their own energy to counter severe energy constraints. And because we have problems of energy, we must allow our mine, mining companies to generate energy for self-use. Uh, you will not need a license for that, you will just be registered and run ahead. Secondly, we've taken a decision that uh, we'll talk to investors who are going to go everywhere where we can get investors to start a generating company outside of ESCOM. And that is a security measure so that as ESCOM is grappling with all the crises and problems, we must have a fail-safe option of the ring energy, particularly with the pressure to close a number of coal-generated power stations. We must start generating energy and ensure that we go back to the comfortable days where we had surplus of energy because once we have that surplus of energy and competition in electricity generation, the price of electricity will be pushed down. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.